once upon a time in inflation. I want to go back in time here to let you all know where inflation has been historically, what the stock market was doing the last time we were this high in inflation, what the bond market was doing, and gold as well. Here we have the last 12 months of inflation rates in the U.S. And in 2022, the average inflation rate actually got over 6% for the first time since 1982. That's right, 40 years of historical inflation rates. We have not been higher in those last 40 years than we were just this last year. And you will remember that our first inflation rate reading here in the U.S. of the year is still holding strong above 6%. And that 6% will continue to be a number that we go back and forth on kind of our benchmark for what is maybe high inflation and moderate to low inflation. And with this in mind, okay, with the highest inflation that we've had in 40 years, we're still around there. Yes, we're on the downslope, as you can see over the last six, seven months, um, but still high and potentially staying in this environment. Uh, a lot of markets, especially interest rates as of today, projecting that we'll stay in this high inflation market for the next couple of years here. So I wanted to look at the last time we were this high and the performance of major asset classes. First, let's get that background of the last time inflation was over 6%, 1974 to 1982. In 1974, the average inflation rate rose from 3.5% to 8.2%. That's the first year that we're looking at in our little bit of a case study here. The rate stayed above 6% for almost a decade, from 74 to 82 there, falling to 3.9% in 1983. And so you can see that these rises and falls uh, to above 6 point, or, or sorry, 6% and below 6% uh, are, are you know, quite substantial. It's not, uh, at least in this case study, the last time that we were high inflation, um, it wasn't a matter of, okay, 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%, 6%. And, um, you know, from there, just kind of uh, slowly increasing and slowly decreasing. It is kind of this, uh, this shocking uh, transition of low inflation right up there to high inflation, and then high inflation right back down to low. As you see, we went from 3.5 to 8.2, and then as we came out of it, 7.5 down to 3.9. Uh, and you can see here that for eight years, consistently stayed above 6%, fluctuating a little bit the first few years there, 8%, 9%, 6%, 6%, 7%. And then they really turned it on, uh, 79 to uh, 81 where we saw the peak there in 1980, uh, and then still an above 10% inflation rate in 1981 before coming off a little bit in 82, and then really dropping off and staying in pretty much an environment of 1% to 3 or 4% for the last 40 years. So let's section these, these uh, data points off into two categories, which will be 74 to 78, um, which is we get into high inflation uh, environment and we just kind of sit around there. And then I want to uh, put the magnifying glass on 79 to 82. Look at that peak in inflation, how all these asset classes were acting. And then what happened as inflation came off a little bit there. So as we start on our journey, your inflation rate there at the top is the same data that you just saw. But I have added in what the 10-year rate was on average in those each, each of those years and the performance of the S&P 500 and the performance of gold. You'll see something pretty interesting, but uh, I will add the context that 10-year rates were already at around 5 or 6% in the early 70s. And they just got up to 7 or 8% as inflation spiked from 3% to 8%. And so 
really interesting environment whereby we already had, uh, especially in terms of now, a high inf- interest rate environment um, above 7%. Inflation spikes, and we're just you know kind of hanging in there. They didn't have to hike rates a whole bunch to combat uh, this inflation, and they didn't um, because the uh, uh, you'll keep in mind that what, what a lot of people will look at when you're relating interest rate and inflation rate is uh, can we keep that interest rate at or above the inflation rate, thus creating a real interest rate that is uh, net positive? And so when we started to really pop off here, 8.2% in 74, we were already at 7 to 8% interest rates. They didn't, I guess, have to hike interest rates too far to get that real interest rate still at 0% or uh, a little bit higher. Obviously, in 75, when we got to a 9% inflation print, uh, rates did increase slightly. But then in 76 and 77, 78, um, you actually see interest rates fall a little and rise a little, mainly flat uh, as inflation rises from below 6% to above 6% stocks. Now, here's a little interesting uh, piece here. In 74, when you have the initial shock of inflation going from 3% to 8%, um, you have the stock market losing 30% of its value. That's that's a crash. That's pretty significant. Um, but in 75, it, it gains back almost all of that ground. And then 76, puts some on top there. 77, lose a little bit. And 78, pretty much unchanged on the year, which is to say that stocks fall from that initial shock. Um, now, of course, everything is more nuanced than this, but uh, since I only have 30 minutes, I, I have to be kind of black and white because, uh, of course, stocks fell for many particular reasons in 74. But you have the increase in inflation from 3% to 8%. Stocks fall 30%. And then inflation from 74 to 75 uh, increases another full percentage point, and stocks regain all of their v- uh, value that they had lost off that initial shock creating a more nuanced scenario, right? I I think what has been the story so far is, oh, inflation high, interest rates high, stocks low, um, which was the story in 2022. But you can already see uh, that stocks aren't seeing that exact direct correlation anymore. It'll be really interesting to see, especially if inflation hangs around these levels or potentially gets higher in 2023, 2024. That doesn't, historically speaking, that doesn't necessitate a lower stock market, even if interest rates get higher. And that'll be further confirmed in the next piece here. Uh, And then gold, as you might imagine, um, rallies (laughs) <laughs> 60 and two thirds of a hundred percent. It, it, it uh, almost doubles its value on the initial shock there, but then actually gives back some ground. And, and this is, we didn't see a 67% increase in gold prices last year off of the initial run up in inflation. Um, but we did see a smaller version of this trend of gold rallying, then backing off a little bit. But then as inflation stuck around, gold continued to increase in price. And as we move to the second part here, where inflation really gets uh, uh, high, gets all the way up to 12% in 1980, gold sees a second resurgence um, here. And you've seen some of the gold price action in recent weeks as we we go back and forth between are we out of the woods for inflation? Are we going back to new highs for inflation? Um, Gold has remained volatile uh, here, and I think will continue to uh, get volatile, as you see more than doubles in 1979 going into 1980 as inflation. Um, I'm sure uh, it was uh, prior to 1979 here as I go back and forth. Um, In 77 and 78, there probably was this feeling of like, oh, inflation under control. Um, You you know, it's no longer at those heights of 9% that we saw in 75. And so, uh, you know, stocks and interest rates and gold not seeing too significant of action. And then you have the resurgence back to 10%, 12%, 10% in 79, 80, and 81. Uh, And this sends gold into uh, a, a huge, huge rally. 
rally there um, before coming off slightly on the downslope of inflation in 81, 82, and 83. Another particularly interesting piece here in that stock market, uh, as we peak in inflation uh, in 1980, the stock market actually performs positively. It gives back some ground in 81, but throughout 79 to 83, this period where inflation uh, peaks and, 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 and goes from 78 being in the six handle to 80 being in the 12 handle, um, the stock market did not take by any means, even with interest rates uh, really were at this point um, uh, required to increase here um, going far beyond, if you can remember, um, in the few years prior, uh, interest rates around 7 8%. And then as inflation uh, gets a little out of hand, north of 10%, in, uh, interest rates do get up to 11 uh, 13 14% uh, there, like I say, to kind of comp- compete with that inflation rate to get the real interest rate back to uh, being a positive. But even with interest rates doubling, um, in this period of the mid 70s to the early 80s, stock market performing positively. Of course, things are are different now, and and uh, the largest market cap stocks are technology stocks that are also categorized as growth stocks that require oftentimes, or at least until now, we'll see what happens in the future, low interest rate environments to help really spur that growth. So things are always going to be nuanced. Things are going to be different, but very, very interesting to see inflation peaking there in 80, uh, interest rates peaking in 81 uh, to combat that higher inflation rate. And stocks being essentially sideways to positive over that time frame. And then, yes, gold rallying hard, especially on that initial shock. Um, And so, where does that leave us? Um, Actually, in my mind, with a significant amount of takeaways, even though we have no clue where inflation is headed, the environment very much seems to be, if you're in the 3 to 6% inflation range, that's moderate. Things could get out of hand, could get back into that high inflation rate environment, um, but not a lot of trends to be seen, uh, historically speaking, in that range. Below 3%, that is where you consider things to be normal. Um, I'm sure that's where the Fed likes things. They always talk about 2% inflation, um, but they really like inflation to be down around 1%, 2 and 3% because then they have their full toolbox of like, okay, if the stock market um, you know, tanks, our interest rates are you know, middling, inflation rates are middling, and we can shift things around pretty readily. Uh, whereas if inflation is high, in the stock market tanks. It's like, man, we want to reduce interest rates and everything else to help spur growth in this hard economic time. But if inflation remains high and we keep interest rates and we move interest rates low, it's we can't really do that. And so that's absolutely where uh, you would expect the less volatility um, and the greatest uh, ability for the Fed to potentially shield stocks and other assets uh, from a crash. Now, above 6%, that's what we would deem as being a high inflationary um, environment. Now, what we've seen from this case study of 74 to 82 is the gold market having a, a, a really positive correlation to inflation on the outset, right? It's, it's almost like you need that shock factor. Whereas if inflation stays around 6% or 7% or 5%, you might not expect a rally in gold where you could really see the volatility of gold pick up to the upside or the downside is if inflation's next print is you know 9% or 10% or to the opposite direction, uh, 3% or 4%. If you see uh, a big shift in in inflation one way or the other, that's where you would see uh, potentially that positive correlation in gold and and some really volatile pieces. Interest rates 
a similar thing if if you see this uh, inflation rate print above six percent again, closer to seven, eight, nine percent. You'd expect that interest rate projections would continue higher as they have since uh, the most recent. Uh, higher than expected inflation uh, rate came out. Stocks, though, the last piece of the story there, I mean, acting as if it's business as usual, which is to say an average stock market uh, year of positive a few percentage points. The the average S&P year the, that is most often quoted is, oh, positive, you know, five to seven percent. And I didn't crunch the numbers, but I should have throughout this whole journey of inflation getting high, peaking and then falling off. Uh, stocks probably averaged a uh, <laughs> a slightly positive trajectory. So really interesting piece there. Definitely a good takeaway in my mind. Um, I, I usually love the pieces that people think are highly correlated to data releases like inflation, like, oh, if inflation comes out, stocks are going to sink, or if inflation uh, comes out low, stocks are going to really rally. Because if there's no correlation and the market does move around those readings, that, to me, could be a good fate. So we'll see what happens there uh, as inflation readings continue to come out throughout the year. It's, it's the most relevant data release that we have, and it's going to continue to be an event until inflation recedes down below 6% and uh, uh, 3% uh, there as well.